Hello, you're watching PC Jack. Today, I'm gonna to be taking a look at all of your setups on the Discord server. Now, I couldn't fit everyone's setups into the video for today, sadly, as there was a lot of setups submitted, but it was still really cool to see your submissions on the Discord to see exactly what kind of hardware everyone is working with. The winner has been selected, and I will reveal that later at the end of the video. Just in case you haven't yet, if you would like to join the PC Jack Discord, then I'll make sure to include a link in the video description so you can get involved for other giveaways such as this. So, let's start taking a look at some setups. First up, we've got Discord member Just Chance. So, let's take a look at the specs first, and then we'll actually take a look at the setup. So, what we've got a Ryzen 7 5800X, Aorus X570 Elite, 32GB of Corsair Vengeance, an MSI RTX 3070, Fihuda 2TB SSD, GB 1TB and 500GB M.2, Fractal Design AIO with Prisma fans, a Corsair 5000D, Asus M.2 expansion card, a Corsair 850PSU, and a custom mouse mat to match the desktop wallpaper. Wow, let's take a look at this. Okay, so I gotta say, I'm pretty blown away by how colour match this is. And the fact that you've even got a custom made mouse mat is um, pretty telling. The mouse mat I got was a free one with something I bought. So I didn't put too much effort into my one. But to see you've actually gone out of your way to actually get a custom design one to match your desktop wallpaper is very impressive. And overall, I've got to say that the actual layout on your desk is very neat and tidy. So you got your coaster and then you got your headset stand. And then you got your speakers neatly positioned but there. And this looks like some sort of DAC, I'm guessing. And uh, overall, just everything is really neat and tidy. I also quite like this monitor. I believe I had a similar one to this. And uh, it's got a nice curve on it. And it's not too oversized. But it seems really ideal specifically for this setup. And then, of course, we've got the vertical monitor. So I'm not quite sure what sort of thing you'd be using this for. Whether it be for coding or be quite useful if you're live streaming and you can keep your chat up on there. But it's very neat and tidy and obviously you've got your desktop icon set aside on the uh, the secondary monitor there just to keep things a bit neater on your primary one, which is really cool. But it's nice to see that you've got everything really color coordinated. But you've got your blue mouse mat along with the actual blue, blue wall and uh, the blue convenience system and obviously the desktop wallpaper. So how about we take a little bit of a look at the actual build itself. Wow, there we go. So uh, we've got a nice shot over here with the tempered glass side panel off. And i got to say, this is looking very nice. So we've obviously got the, uh, the Fractal AIO. And you've got this positioned in the uh, the top for an exhaust. Which I would say is the most optimal way to have your radiator installed in your system anyway. So kudos on that. Some cases, obviously, you can't get away with it. But if you can, it's a really good idea to be having it up in the top. And with these Prisma fans, I do quite like that you've kept everything pretty uniform with the blue colour going throughout the system. And uh, the one thing I would be curious on though is this uh, Asus M.2 expansion card. Does it choke off that 3070 much? Because uh, I'd be a bit more concerned about that, but I'm guessing you would have thoroughly tested this by now and seen that it hasn't. So um, that'd be my only concern, but I'm guessing it's going to be getting plenty of fresh airflow in from the front. But I really like these cable extensions. They are very nice and uniform, and especially with this nice curve they got going over there. And I know it's a, a nice little simple thing you can do with your setup to improve things, but cable extensions do go a very long way. And then, uh, of course, you've got matching ones for your uh, 24 pin. The uh, 8 pin, obviously, you've got that there as well, but it's probably a bit more um, covered up, I would guess. But it's nice you've still got that there anyway. And then, yeah, obviously, we've got this uh, RGB little bram, and uh, I always appreciate when it's just not left on uh, Rainbow Vomit, but. You've just got this simple white illumination which actually goes pretty well with the rest of the system. All in all, a really good setup and uh, a really strong start to the video. So how about we move on to the next one. Moving on to our next setup, we have a setup from Dankest Tevez, which features a Ryzen 2600X, an MSI B450M, 8GB of RAM, GTX 1080, Team Group 250GB STD, I hope that's an SSD, a 1TB WD Blue hard drive, cooling fans, Okay, that's not very specific. And a Core GC 500, 500 watt golden PSU. And legendary keyboard with a purple heart connector. Let's take a little look at the setup first. Now overall, I would just describe this as pretty modest. It's not uh, trying to be all out there, but it's a functional system. And the main thing I do like a lot, especially with the actual build itself, is that it's a very functional build. So if you take a little look at this now, so we've got your 1080 bit here. It's pretty nice cooler design of this 1080 with the ROG design. And uh, things are very neat. I've got to say, the cable management in this system is really nice. You haven't got anything unnecessarily bundled. I can't see this cable is kind of drooping over here, but um, it is a very tidy looking system overall. And uh, it's nice to see you've got your power supply mounted the correct way to be drawing air from the bottom of the case, which is always good. And you've got this nice Be Quiet cooler, which is absolutely enough for 2600X. 
Now, you don't see mechanical storage in systems as much nowadays, but at least for here, you have got them displayed, but they are fairly tidy and not um, ruining the overall cleanliness of the build. So, overall, a very nice looking system and one that gets the job done more than anything. Next up, we've got a build from L91, so let's take a look. We've got the Dan A4 H2O case, a Gigabyte B660i Aorus Pro DDR4 version, an Intel 12700K, a Gigabyte RTX 3070 Ti Gaming OC, Crucial Ballistic 16GB, 2x8GB C16, an EKAO Basic 240 with two Filmotech Tough Fan 12s, a Corsair SF600 Platinum Rated Power Supply, and one P5 Plus 1TB SSD. Okay, I'm a big fan of mini ITX systems and I love it when systems use the space as optimally as possible. You can see that here with how you've stored the hose for the actual AIO where it's gone around the actual system itself. That is very neat and tidy and actually looks very clean overall. And it does allow you to actually bundle up a little bit with like the cables themselves which is really handy. And I do love this all black design. Take a look on the other side of the case then, we can see the 3070Ti be here, which is looking pretty nice and tight in there. Now I'm not that familiar with the H2O version of the Dan case, but I'm assuming this has a mesh side panel, so it should be getting plenty of fresh air from the outside of the case, which is probably going to be fine. And then we got the actual setup altogether, so we got the case on the side, and we got an Xbox Series X on there as well, just for all the possible gaming you can get. Uh, I like this keyboard. I'm not quite sure what brand this is, but I do like a nice basic 65 percenter. At least I think it looks like a, about there. And then you got your DAC as well, and uh, I think I had this MSI monitor as well. A lot of people seem to be going for their MSI monitors in this video. Uh, I don't actually know what this figurine is. If you could clarify what this is from, I'd really like to know. And then we've got the, the pit of OBS, because everyone likes to stare into the abyss. Overall, a really clean setup that doesn't rely too much on RGB lighting, but more so a really clean and neat aesthetic. Moving on, let's take a look at another setup. So this one is from Sifat Ula, who's got an Intel Core i3-8100, an Aswag H310 CM HDV, 16GB of G-Score Rip Jaws V2400 speed, a GTX 1650, an SSD from PNY 250GB model, a Toshiba 500GB hard drive, a Corsair Carbide Series Spec 01, and a Corsair VS450 450W power supply and its stock cooler. Okay, so a couple of things that I need to bring up on here is that it does look like you are struggling for space a little bit with this desk. I'm not quite sure how old this desk is, it does seem like you are struggling for space a little bit, but if it gets the job done, that's the most important thing. The one thing I do appreciate though is that you have actually got the system off the floor. It's elevated slightly with the actual legs for your desk, which is always good to see. But I do really feel that maybe you'd be struggling with where your mouse is. Like, you're probably not going to be doing many trick shots in CSGO at that rate. But uh, if it works for you, it works. Let's take a little bit of a look at the actual desktop itself. Okay, so we don't have much to go on here because we've got the side panel on. But obviously you got a nice bit of like RGB lighting and uh, it's a pretty clean system. Case looks a little bit dated at this point, but you're getting fresh air through this vent at the front, which is always good. And obviously you've got the fan in the back, which is going to be pushing plenty of airflow through. So um, overall, not bad. This is another build I think is uh, fairly modest in what it does, but it gets the job done, which is most important. Moving on to our next setup, so not so much a setup, but we've got this laptop here from Aditya Divine, and he's given us some handy annotations to see what is actually wrong with his system. Okay, so he's got a weird dead circle in the corner of his screen, that's not a good start. And he's got a missing battery, okay, that's never a good sign if you can't actually get the battery. Wouldn't you be able to get a replacement battery? That's something I would have thought you could do. And he's got a 720p TN display, so uh, slacking a little bit in terms of resolution but there and TN is not going to be the best for color accuracy but for high refresh gaming it's kind of handy but obviously if you're 720p I'm guessing this is probably going to be a 60 hertz monitor at this rate okay so we have some actual specs be here um I'm really ashamed of posting my setup seeing other people's setups but ah uh, well we've all got to start somewhere you know so let's take a look at what you actually have so we've got uh, an i5 5200u four gigabytes of ddr3 1600 megahertz speed a one terabyte hard drive about to die gpu is dead battery is dead screen is dead motherboard got dead then it got repaired for 150 dollars two years ago hard drive sounds like it's scratching a mirror surface it stutters even while playing my downloaded lectures on vlc media player the only games i can play are gta 3 and left for dead i'll probably get something new in october my life is as bad as this laptop 
I don't think it's as bad as that. Come on now. Now, this may not be the best setup that we take a look at in today's video, but the important thing is, is that we've all got to start somewhere. And hopefully, Aditya will be able to upgrade to a desktop setup. And I wish you all the best for that. Okay, so our next setup comes from Avaya underscore Epfv. So we've what have we got? We got a Lenovo Legion 5 15 AR. I'm not going through a whole serial number for a laptop. Basically, it's a laptop with a Ryzen 5 4600H, uh, a one terabyte and 256 gigabyte SSD, eight gigabytes of memory, and a 15.6 inch display, 1920 by 1080, 120 hertz. And for a GPU, it's got a GTX 1650 Ti. So pretty good all things considered uh, let's take a look so this is a bit of an interesting laptop setup so the way you've got this sort of like setup on a stand and obviously you've got some peripherals plugged in as well so it makes it a bit more like a, a traditional desktop setup and what we got here we got oh we got a ukulele that's always good is that a skateboard up against the wall okay that's not bad um but yeah it's a quite nice little uh, laptop setup and uh it seems like you've got a decent amount of space and uh you've even got your mug by there just to show your a drinker from a mug that's always good and i do quite like this uh, this lighting you've got in the background it's uh, pretty cool and uh, oh we've even got a guitar on the side can't quite see the rest of it there but um overall pretty nice and tidy setup and uh, making the most of it with a laptop build next up we've got tabernacle and what we got here so he's got a ryzen 5 5600g uh vetru v5 air cooler no gpu sad face well things are improving so you may be able to get a gpu soon but for the time being uh, 5600G is uh, no slouch when it comes to um, 1080p low gaming. It's um, it'll do in a pinch is the main thing. Anyway, so and then we got Crucial Ballistics 2 by 8 gigabytes at 3600 speed, uh, MSI Mag B550 and Bazooka, uh, WD SN550 one terabyte NVMe SSD, uh, Filmatic Smart 500 watt power supply, an Antec DP301M, uh, Acer RG. I'm not reading these names again. I hate monitor names. 165 hertz monitor, uh, Techware Phantom 87, Logitech G305, Steel Series Arctis One wireless headset. So let's take a look at this. Now this is a very neat setup, all things considered. So uh, you get bonus points as well for having a Hollow Knight desktop background. That's always good. I've been getting into that lately. Uh, I do like this mouse pad you got. It's uh, nice, decent size, and uh, it's very clean looking. I know you seem a bit gutted that you can't get a hold of a GPU quite yet, but if you're playing games especially like Hollow Knight, which is not a particularly demanding game, a 5600G is still going to be absolutely plenty for that. Obviously it is ideal to have a better performing GPU, but if you can play a game similar to this for the time being, you should do pretty well. And then you got a very neat collection of games stored right up here, and some sort of plushy toy? I don't quite know what that is, but fair enough, that's fine. And uh, yeah, again, it's just a very neat setup, and I do appreciate that it is very tidy, which is Always something I like to see with these builds. Next up, we've got Noah Nacho. So we've got a Ryzen 9 3900X, a Noctua NHD 15, an Asus ROG Strix RTX 2070 Super, an MSI B350 Tomahawk, 4x8GB 3200 speed Corsair Vengeance LPX, a Be Quiet Pure Power 11 750W power supply, a Samsung 970 Evo M.2, and the Corsair 4000D Airflow. And we've also got some monitors over here. So we got the MSI G241. That's the best monitor name I've heard in this entire video. So that's a good start. Uh, runs at 1080p, 144Hz. And then the monitor on the right is the MSI Optics Mag... I'm not reading the rest of that. QD 1440p, 165Hz display. And for headphones, we've got SteelSeries Arctis 9, mouse Razer Viper Mini, keyboard KBD Fan 67 Lite custom keyboard with Garon Yellows. That's pretty good. I do like to see a custom keyboard. But let's take a look at the actual setup itself. So to start, I'd like to see that we have uh, a Linux aficionado amongst us on the Discord. Uh, I am trying to go through that process myself, if anyone's seen that, and it's been a bit dicey, but uh, I'm getting along a bit, just about. So uh, yeah, it's a very clean setup. I really like this custom keyboard. This is um, If this custom keyboard was built by you, then uh, additional props to you on that. I would love to try and build my own keyboard. That's something I'd like to tick off the bucket list. And minimal RGB lighting, which is um, always a plus in my book, because uh, I'm not even that fussed on it. There's a nice hand-drawn picture over there, as you do. Taking a look at the build itself, that is a very clean-looking build. I do really like the NHD15, and if you can pull it off in a system, it is an absolute beast of a CPU air cooler. And uh, obviously, because it's a bit dimly lit, I can't see too much in terms of uh, cable management, but I can see you've got your cables neatly tucked in, like your 24 pin over there. The same as your GPU cable going uh, down underneath. Um, got some cables coming off from the NHD15, but they can be a bit of a pain because they... Uh, do have the splitter come off of them but um, overall a really nice and clean build 
Moving on, we've got Top Free Gaming, who I'm going to clarify immediately is disqualified from this because of his affiliation with the channel and being a co-host on Tech Flashback. But we'll take a little look at his setup as well, anyway. So what we got? Like first up, we're just going to say like Top Free Tech. Like uh, I can't really recommend that too much. No, no. I'm not going to bash on Jerry too much, but I do like that he's got the Top 3 logo up here, which is pretty cool. And uh, the actual cable management for this system is really nice. And uh, I haven't seen these M.2s before from XPG. I didn't realize they did an RGB M.2 heatsink, which is pretty cool to be fair. And I do quite like this Cooler Master AIO. And I believe this is a 360, like it looks like it, yeah. So you've got three fans on there. So he's got a 360mm cooler, which is nice. He's got a 360mm AIO, which is really good, especially for cooling something like a 5800X, which I believe you have in this system. And uh, that's a nice GPU. I don't quite know what model that one is, but that's a pretty chunky boy. That looks like a two and a half free slot card. Pretty good. But yeah, sorry, Jerry, you're not going to be entered in this, just so you know, but uh, props for trying. And finally, we've got a build from Turo, and let's take a look at the specs for this before we begin. So we've got uh, Ryzen 9 3900X, an ASUS Tough Gaming X570 Pro, 32GB of Corsair Vengeance LPX 3200 speed, an RTX 3070, a 1TB SSD, another 4 hard disks, I am in game development and need a lot of disk space. Okay, fair enough. Uh, a monitor Samsung S2, I'm not reading all that again, 1920x1080. 60 hertz fractal design 7 evga gq 1000 gold uh, i would for sure change that monitor i was going to say a 60 hertz monitor seems ill matched with an rtx 3070 but at least you're aware of that to start off but let's take a look at an actual an actual look at your setup itself okay so uh russian cuisine i'm not quite sure what russian cuisine is besides vodka um we got some spices okay that, that's that's interesting fair enough um yeah, if you were to get a new monitor, I would definitely recommend getting uh, either a bit more desk space or um, uh, an actual monitor mount would be handy rather than stacking it on books. But if it does a job for you, then um, that's totally fine. This is a bit of an interesting uh, keyboard though. I'd be interested to use something like this. But let's move on to the actual build itself. So, okay. So, um, wow, I gotta say, this is one of the smallest looking 3070 cooler designs I've actually seen in quite some time. Dual fan setup with the cooling fans underneath is pretty unique. I've never quite seen it set up like that before. But if that's doing the job for temperatures, then uh, even better. And then we've got the basic um, Wraith Prism cooler, which is quite nice because it's still got that RGB light in, so it's pretty cool. Um, i got to say though, if you get into this point, we've got this much storage, so you've got up to four mechanical drives. I would start looking into using a NAS of some kind, so just so you can isolate that from your main build. Of course, if you do need that storage to be local, then that may be a bit different, so I'm not quite sure how it would work for game development, but a NAS could be an interesting addition to your setup if you wanted to try and um, uh, reduce the amount of space being taken up by these drives. And I can't say, I'm trying to find more of the case, but the case itself seems uh, pretty nice. Kind of got a bunch of stuff stacked on top of it, but you've got ventilation down the side, which is fine. And at least with those mechanical drives, they are kind of being um, blocked off from sight with this uh, cover over here. And obviously you've got your case on top of some books, just to obviously increase airflow a little bit, I'm guessing. But overall, a really nice build. And I'm guessing with those fans underneath the GPU, that probably does help pretty well. So, um, um, yeah, a really good setup. And someone who's a fan of the European Union, which is even better. So, now that we've got through all the setups, I think now is the time that I actually reveal the winner of the giveaway. And the giveaway is for an Epo Maker EP84 keyboard. I'll include some more information on that keyboard in the video description, along with my affiliate link if you'd like to pick one up for yourself. But the winner of the Discord giveaway is, drumroll, L91. So, congratulations. I would have sent you a DM by the point this video has actually gone live to get your details. But congratulations, and thank you to everyone that actually entered the giveaway. It was really cool to take a look at all of your setups and see exactly what kind of thing you're working with at the moment. I'm hoping to do something like this a bit more in the future, so make sure to keep your eyes peeled. So, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. Again, if you'd like to talk more about myself and other like-minded hybrid enthusiasts, then make sure to check out the PCJack Discord. You'll find links to all those in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.